Chem 2212, the Wittig reaction. We're going to combine our starting materials in our 10 mil round bottom flask here on our uh, hot plate. We're going to be using it for stirring this time around. We've got our benzyl triphenyl phosphonium chloride. We have our 9 anthraldehyde. See that? And our methylene chloride is our solvent system here. So we'll combine our solids in our flask, rinse in our solvent, and then put our spin vane in so that we can stir the mixture. Oops. Be very careful when you do this. Our nine ounce raldehyde. And I'm going to pour my methylene chloride in through my funnel here. If you look at that, you can probably see that we've got some solids stuck in there. We'll go ahead and rinse it down using our methylene chloride. And there we go. We'll put our spin vane in. Set it in the center of our stir plate. And we'll start it stirring ever so slowly here. Now over the course of the next three minutes, I'm gonna add dropwise our sodium hydroxide solution, 50% aqueous. I'm gonna do that off camera. And then once we get finished with that addition, we're gonna let this whole mixture stir at room temperature for 30 minutes. All right, we've added all of our sodium hydroxide solution. So we're ready to let this stir for 30 minutes uh, on the stir plate. We have to make sure that we keep an eye on our spin vane the entire time. It has to stir the reaction thoroughly throughout that 30 minutes. We want to be real careful. If it stops stirring, then our reaction won't uh, proceed the way that we uh, want it to. Okay, we'll check back in 30 minutes. We've been stirring for 30 minutes. Our reaction is complete. We're going to go ahead and take it off of our hot plate and out of our aluminum block. We're going to take our spin vane out and we're going to move over to our separatory funnel. We're going to use our magnetic rod here. Take our spin vane out. It's a nice yellow color. That's our 9 anthraldehyde. We'll lay that down. And then we'll pour the contents of our reaction vessel into our separatory funnel. We've got to make sure that it's closed first. And we want to take a close look here. We see our layer separation. It's not perfect right now, but it's going to get a little bit better in a minute. So we've got our two layers. We're going to do two rinsings of our reaction vessel that will add to the volume of each one of those layers. The first rinse that we're going to do is five mils of methylene chloride. That will go into our reaction vessel. We're going to try and get out anything remaining any of our product that remains. We'll swirl that and we'll pour it down into our separatory funnel. Next, we'll take a five milliliter portion of deionized water. We'll pour that into our reaction vessel. Give that a second swirl and then pour it into our separatory funnel. Now that we've done this, we've got two layers forming. I'm going to give it a swirl. Let me take my funnel out real quick. Give it a swirl and try and help those layers separate a little bit 
more noticeably. And we're ready to extract. Our layers have separated nicely. We've got a top layer, which is our aqueous layer. Our bottom layer is our methylene chloride layer. We're gonna drain that into our 125 Erlenmeyer flask. That'll be our first step here. So that's our bottom methylene chloride layer. I'll set that to the side. Then I'm going to use 10 milliliters of methylene chloride, fresh methylene chloride, to extract the aqueous layer again. Making absolutely sure we're closed. So 10 mils of methylene chloride. Put our stopper in. We're gonna vent up into the snorkel and away from the cameraman and myself. good shape and we're ready to drain off that bottom layer. Now we're going to give this just a few minutes to separate properly before we drain off that bottom layer to make sure that we're getting just methylene chloride and no water. So our layer has separated. We can see our yellow colored bottom layer, which is our methylene chloride. We're going to go ahead and drain that off into our 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Should we get right at the interface? And we might get a little bit of the water. We want to make sure we get all of our product in our methylene chloride layer. And if we do get a little bit of water, that's fine. We're going to go through a drying phase right now. We're going to use calcium chloride to dry this methylene chloride layer. First thing I'll do though is I'm going to go ahead and drain out my aqueous layer. That's going to go into our waste in just a minute. I will keep it to the end of the experiment just to make sure that I haven't mixed up my layers. But in this particular experiment, that's a very difficult thing to do. So we're following our yellow color here. So let me go ahead and put some calcium chloride pellets into our beaker or into our flask. And we'll swirl that around. And what we're looking for is if there's any water present in the solution, we'll see those start to clump together and stick together. So as long as they're flowing freely, as long as they're swirling in the solution, I'm probably doing that a little bit too quickly, then we know that we've got no more water remaining in the solution. So we actually did okay. We separated that out from the aqueous layer pretty well with the separatory funnel. We're gonna decant this into a round bottom flask and then take it over to our Rotovap to get rid of our methylene chloride and obtain our final product, or our crude product, actually. We'll still have to go through a recrystallization step. Let me go ahead and decant this. So we can either gravity filter or we can decant. With calcium chloride, the individual pellets are large enough that it's fairly easy to decant, which means just to pour the liquid off while leaving the solid in our flask. So I'll do that very carefully.
making sure I don't accidentally pour any of my pellets into our flask here. And I think we're good to go. Now, of course, we do lose a little bit in this process. You can see that there's gonna be some of our crystalline product that will remain, so that's one of your many sources of error that could crop up during the course of this experiment when you're looking at uh, your percent yield. So we've got this ready to go. Let's go take it over to the Rotovap and drive off our methylene chloride. We're here at the Rotovap. We're ready to get set up. We've got our round bottom flask with our product solution in it. We're gonna put that on the end of the trap, clip it in place with a cat clip. That'll keep it from falling into our water bath, which is heated up to about 40 degrees. We're gonna turn on, as we're driving off the methylene chloride, we'll turn on our pump here to make sure that we've got cooling liquid flowing through the barrel, just like we did for our last experiment. We just can't have that going when we're trying to record because it's obnoxiously loud. We'll go ahead and turn on our vacuum. If you hear that hiss, I'll go ahead and close off so that we're under vacuum for the whole system. Whoop. And it's already starting to come across pretty quickly. I'm going to start this turning slowly but surely. There we go. And we'll lower it down into our water bath. Once all that methylene chloride is removed and captured in the bell here, We'll take it back over to the lab and get it recrystallized. So we took our flask off of our Rotovap. As you can see, it is a dark yellow, sort of a muddy yellow color, and it's solidified. Our product is solidified in the flask. We're going to recrystallize this using a minimal amount of one propanol that we've warmed up on our hot plate here. So I'm going to go ahead and take small amounts, small portions of our one propanol, and we'll recrystallize our final product. We're going to put in just enough to dissolve the impure product. We've got about 20 mils in this little flask here. That should be more than enough. I'll swirl this for a while and we'll come back once everything's dissolved. So we've used about 20 mils of our one propanol. We've got a opaque solution. I don't think we're gonna be able to get it to go clear, but we've got enough of our product back into solution that we're gonna transfer it now into our uh, ice bath and begin the precipitation process. We'll let that sit for five to 10 minutes, and come back and check to see what the crystals look like. It's time to take our solution out of the ice bath. If we look at it closely, we can see a lot of crystals suspended in our yellow liquid. Looks like it's recrystallized nicely. We'll go ahead and perform a suction filtration to obtain our pure product. I'm going to set up the heat refinal before I bring the flask over. We've got everything clamped. Our filter flask, we're hooked up to the vacuum line. We've got our neoprene adapter. We'll take our properly sized filter paper and we're gonna wet it down with just a little bit of one propanol so that none of our crystals flow underneath the dry filter paper when we begin our filtration. Okay, so we'll bring over our flask, start up our vacuum. We've got good suction. And let's go ahead and filter our pure product. We've got a little bit remaining in the flask. We'll rinse that down with some one propanol. 
it looks like we've got some nice yellow crystals in our filtration setup here. Swirl this around to try and get the last of those chunks and then upend it into the flask. Okay, it looks like we got them out. So we'll let air pull through this for about five to 10 minutes to make sure that we get all of our one propanol uh, pulled through. And we'll put it in the oven for a few minutes to dry it out before we do our melting point. We've been pulling air through our Butner funnel here for the last five to 10 minutes. I think we're ready to start collecting our crystals here. I'll break our seal at the flask. Go ahead and lift it off, and if you want to come around this side, I'll scrape it out. Got some nice, fine yellow crystals here, which doesn't surprise us after the color of our solution for the entirety of this experiment. Go ahead and get all this scraped off, and then I'm going to take that filter paper and scrape that a little bit as well to make sure that we get all of our product onto our watch glass. As you can see we've got some that went underneath our filter paper even though we wet it. That does happen from time to time. But it looks like we're going to be okay collecting it. So now I'm going to pick up my filter paper, hold it by the edge, and I'm just going to scrape it down to make sure I get anything that's still stuck to the paper. And there's actually quite a bit. Oops, slide it off the edge. There we go. We'll look at the back side as well. Whoops. And there we go. Okay. That's just about everything that we can get. So we'll go ahead and put this in the oven for about five minutes. Let it dry out even more, and then it'll be time to weigh it and to get a melting point. We've got our crystals on our watch glass. We're going to go ahead and put this into an oven. Our oven's running at about 75 degrees right now. We'll let that sit for about five minutes and come back and check on it. We've taken our powder out of the oven. We're weighing it with the watch glass. I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of plastic on top so we can get a very accurate measure here. 102.05. We'll give it a second to, uh, to settle down here. 5.5. We did not weigh the watch glass beforehand, so we'll, once we get finished, we'll put our powder in the waste, and we'll clean off the watch glass, weigh that, and we'll be able to get our final product uh, weight. I'm going to go ahead and load a capillary and get a melting point, and then we'll do a final shot of our data sheet so you've got all the material that you need to write up your lab report.
set and ready to go. And that should be plenty to get our melting point ready. Actually, let's put it in the center. Okay everyone, here's our final data sheet for this reaction. We completed our melting point test and we got a value of 124, a range of 124 to 128 degrees Celsius. We went back and weighed our watch glass. Uh, once we cleaned it off, it came out to 101.712 grams. That gives us a difference of 0.343 grams for our purified product, so 343 milligrams. All of my observations are recorded down at the bottom. So this is the data that you'll use to write up your report, to calculate your limiting reagents, your theoretical yields, uh, and your final yield. Good luck.